All right, so when I left the last video, we were talking about flat color, and I was showing you some of the professional examples and how the before digital, they were much more limited. Now, the blessing of digital is that we can do millions of colors for our flats, right? The, the downside of that is it's really hard to find the right colors, the ones that just work. And so this is the professional practice. You flat first with just random colors, and the only thing you want to keep in mind is that they are as different from each other as possible. So that's why you end up with a guy that has a turquoise beard and a fluorescent green you know, sack and a pink saddle. But that's a job. That's the flatting job. And then the professional colorist takes over from this file and then is able to just use the paint bucket and then change any one of these into any other color they choose, even if the colors they choose. I think this is a funny example because this is a professional example, but look how boring their flat colors are, right? They're all just very close browns. But the whole point of flatting is that this is a nice clean shape that can easily be replaced with a different color. So if the colorist then wants to brighten this, it's already separated for them. Now, this isn't the end of the job. Once you're done with the flat color, then you can go on to splitting those flat local colors. Local color means the color that the thing is. So flatting does not give you the color that the thing is. Flatting just fills up the white space. Local color fills your flats with the color that you want. And then you can split it into lights and darks. And that's what tends to look a little bit better, right? The duotone. This is hard edge duotone, or what's called cell shading and animation. This is soft edge duotone by Dave Stewart with Hellboy. But you can see Dave Stewart's flats are a lot more saturated than the actual local colors that are then duotone. So the trick is finding the right colors. And that's often based on bringing in reference, right? This colorist, this is uh, Ben Caldwell. He goes by Cheeks. No, not Ben Caldwell. This is Sean Galloway. He goes by Cheeks. Uh, he's basing these colors off of a He-Man toy, right? And then finding kind of the local flat color of the He-Man toy and then adding his duotone lights and shadows. So what I'm going to teach you is to first do flat color everywhere and then to split it into duotones but I'm still working on my flat color here. I've got a little bit more to fill in. The gray shows me all those areas that still need to be filled. So let's keep working on it. I click on my line art, I use my magic wand, and I select the things I wanna fill in. If I wanna speed it up a little bit, I can do it this way. I can use my magic wand with contiguous checked, hold down shift and select all these other shapes. And I mean all of them. So my little crumb, as long as they're contained, the little wings on my fly, the little body of my fly, all these individual shapes. Sometimes you have to zoom in, Command Plus. Get the empty space. I'm holding down Shift to add to my selections, right? Ah. So it selects from the point of your arrow cursor when you're trying to get into these tight spaces. All right. So now that's everything all at once. Now I go to my cheese layer and I'm just going to fill it with a crazy color. So I use my paint bucket and I'll pick this bright cheese color. So I'm talking about the cheese layer. And I'm just going to use the paint bucket, and I'm just going to drop it in. And you'll see it will fill it in everywhere. So now, I don't have everything filled in with the right colors, but I have everything filled in. If I turn everything off, I don't see a checkerboard anywhere behind my actual illustration, right? Except for maybe right there. I need to fill that in. <laughs> so how can I do that? I go to my line art, use the magic wand, click on that space use my paint bucket. 
With my paint bucket, I can hold down Option and steal a color from myself to get that same pink, but I need to do it on the cheese layer. So now I'm going to rename that cheese layer into my flat color layer. But before I do that, I'm just going to use my lasso and put some variety into this frosting. I'm not splitting it into duotones yet. I'm just putting more highlights. And you can see where the shape is open, the magic wand doesn't work so well. So you might need to use your lasso to grab it. All right, and now I'm going to use the paint bucket and I'm going to steal the color from myself and then I'm going to drop it in to those different selections. All right. So now I don't actually need to go to my line art anymore. All I need to do is use my paint bucket and hold down option to be color selecting. And I'm going to use this color that I've already used to fill in my fly's wings. I just have to be careful not to click on the background because it will fill it all in. And I don't want that. And then let's see what other colors do I need? I'm going to pick a red for the check mark. So I'll steal that from Rutabaga here. And maybe I want that for these letters as well. Yeah, it kind of works. I liked that cheese color too, though. It's tricky. I guess this looks a little too much like The Simpsons, so we'll go with the red. And then maybe I do something in between, like this orangish. No, but that's too close to a cigarette, so how about this eggplanty color? And then, of course, I can select it with the magic wand. Actually, I'm going to do that with all three of these because they all feel a little dark. So on black, these aren't going to read all that well. right? And then I'm going to go to Image and Adjustments and Levels, and I'm just going to brighten up the midtones. And I can also do Image Hue Saturation and play with warming them up a bit and saturating them a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now, what else am I missing? My crumbs should be the, on the flat color, should be the same as the cake donut. All right. So that's good. And then my fly should probably be like a bluish. So do I have a bluish, a dark bluish? Yeah, like this color. I'm going to steal that. And the bodies of the flies. Are These are bodies. My little fly bodies. <laughs> I have a cat. does a good job. All right. So now... I don't need my little palette anymore, but someone asked, how can you pick your color? Well, you can always just paint it off to the edge here so that you know what colors you're using. And then you just erase those before you finish. Right. So this is kind of the palette that I've built so far. And I do feel like I need a yellow, so I'm going to find a way to get that in there. Maybe with that little shape right there, maybe with that little bit 
right there. You know, we'll get that yellow in there. Okay. Now, oh, actually, I want to use my light blue there and use that for the eye of my fly right there. Okay. Maybe these are two bug eyes, so I'll make those both white. Whoops. Don't click the background. There we go. Nope, looked better before. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn off my reference for the time being. And I'm going to make sure it looks good on black. The flies don't really read, but everything else reads pretty well. And then on white. And now I am good with flat color. So I'm going to rename my cheese layer flat local color. Now, what would flatting look like? Flatting wouldn't ever use the same color anywhere. So if this was professional flatting like this, let me get to the example, right? They would be extreme different colors everywhere to give you the most flexibility. And now I'm below 5% so I can plug in my computer. Everyone can stop holding their breath. All right. So what I like to do is with a flatting copy, sometimes after the fact, is now I'm going to take my flat color, I copied them, and I'm going to go to image adjustment hue saturation, and I'm going to really push that hue slider so that it becomes kind of wild. Like weird colors, right? I can push it to the left. I can push it to the right. Ooh, I kind of like that. It's like the negative colors. And you can see how different that is. But they're both helpful because they allow you to select colors very differently. And then one thing I also like to do is to put my flat colors on top of my flatting colors and then just take the opacity down a little bit to mix them a little. So you see how it's shifting. They're all just still flat colors. They're all the same value, the same gray color, if you were to make like a black and white photo of it. But you have kind of warm versus cool. right? So I'm just going to take it down a little bit, and maybe I like those colors a little bit more. And then what I can do is duplicate both of those layers and then merge them. So this is my kind of refined flat color. And maybe I take that and I use image adjustments and I play with the levels and I heighten the contrast a little between those colors. And then I might do color balance. It's hard to find the right colors, right? And I'm going to take the midtones and I'm going to push them a little bit more towards magenta, a lot more towards yellow, a little bit towards red. Then I'm going to take the shadows, I'm going to push them towards blue and cyan. And take the highlights and push them towards magenta. And so all of these are ways you can play with different flat colors. And I like all of those, except I don't like the frosting. So what I'm going to do is just select it with the magic wand and then delete it so the frosting from underneath comes through. And now I like those colors. Yeah. So those are my flat colors. So now I've got my cheese layer. I've got my flat color. So I'm going to mark that yellow. I'm going to merge all these together into one flat color layer. And if I had to turn it in, this would be a finished version once I got rid of my palette, right? This would be a finished version of a full color spot illustration. But that's the simplest type of coloring. That's just flat coloring. So what comes next? Yeah, like I showed you with the cigarette, which would never look good as just one color, right? I'm going to add... Well, right now it's what's called duotone hard edge, right? So I'm going to add that to other things.